Hi everyone, uh, my name is Prince Cradell. Um, I'm currently the policy advisor for diversity and inclusion at Netherlands Dance Theatre. I'd like to speak a little bit about Recentering Narratives, which is a project that we piloted a year ago. And so Recentering Narratives is about um, digging into NDT's archive uh, and locating uh, stories of marginalized as well as diverse individuals from NDT's past. So um, today I'm super excited to invite uh, Sebastian Pico Haynes to join us um, and give us a bit of his perspective. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. What yes. an honor. Lovely. Yes. Um, well, so first and foremost, I've had the pleasure of working with you in NDT1, um, <laughs> which has been an honor. Uh, I think we worked together for about four years. So I know that you have a large story about how you've come to NDT, where you came from before that. Can you tell us a little bit about um, just how you started dancing, where you come from, uh, and what initially brought you to it? So I started in Holstebro. Okay. And there they have multiple disciplines you can, you can do. Like when I was there, it was either you do ballet or you do multiple disciplines of dance. And so since I'd seen the Greece musical, the multiple, the Disciplin variety of dance was, was what I was going for. What was really nice was that we got stage experience already at that age, eight, nine, yeah. eight, nine, ten years old. So th I'm, I'm really happy that that was my, en my entrance into, into the dance world. I think if I had had a more strict way, which was what I found later within the, the ballet, the more like focused one, one way street, yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it has always been a part of me to, hmm. to have these multiple places of coming from. And I guess yeah. that's also me and my story. I, I come from many different places. So yeah. that has always been. It's interesting what you say, because maybe, um, like you said, if it was super focused and not this multidisciplinary, maybe th this um, dance bug, as we say, wouldn't have bitten you mm. in the same way or even at that time. Exactly. After a few years of ballet in Holstebro, there is no more ballet after a certain age there. You have to continue your studies in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. And that meant moving into, uh, there's a dorm inside the Royal Danish Theater in mm -hmm. Copenhagen that is meant for the, the kids coming from abroad further away. Further yeah, away. Also, also some abroad. So what was going through school like yes, in, terms yeah. of, um, in terms of difference? Yes, yes, yes. Especially at this age, I'm curious to yes, know. Yeah. And it's interesting because I feel that we've had this conversation, but very kind of scratching the surface sure. in the time that we've worked together. Sure, sure. Um, so I'm super excited to sure. know how it was. Sure. So I joined when I was 12, 13 years old. We were 12 kids in the class. Um, I think we had me and a girl who were not, let's say, Danish, yeah. national. Um, and it was, it was. Which you are Danish. I am Danish. I would yes. like to accept yes. that. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> but let's say you actually are Danish. I am Danish. So. Yeah, yeah. I have the <laughs> dual citizenship, everything. Yeah. I speak the language, all the things. Yeah. Um, but it took, it didn't take a long time to, to figure out that, oh, this is unusual. Hmm. We, we were not the, the first to pick. We were not the, the chosen ones for, for quite a while. Um, mm. and, and realizing quite early that, okay, some, some of the people in the powers, uh, positions yeah. of power took, uh, took some good decisions mm. making, uh, making space for us because, let's say, 10 years before us. Yeah, yeah. No one. But again, in, in Denmark, that was pretty much my life, being the, the yeah. only black kid most of the time. Right. Yeah, it, it, it brought its, its challenges. Right. I think I, I shook up the system a few times by, by simply being there. And yeah. seeing it now, I'm like, oh, wow, it, it really impacted. That's what that yeah. was, yeah. yeah. 
at the time, no, not so much. I yeah. was just focused on the drama in the school class and doing a lot of ballet. Right. But looking back now, it was a big step, big yeah. step for the school. How was it going into the company? Mm -hmm. What was that like? So the old <coughs> system that was, was there was that you, after the ninth grade of mandatory school, you would become an apprentice. Mm -hmm. So that also meant no high school. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we were 15, 16 when we became apprentices and that was sink or swim, like uh, fully, fully involved in productions. Wow. With m more training on top of it. Right. It was uh, very intense. I have, I have the impression that you still, that you do feel that you were very much, um, despite the difficulty in the training, that you were embraced by very your peers. Much, very much. That it wasn't that you were, um, you know, uh, uh, othered, as, as they say. Absolutely. Because not. you really grew up fr uh, from, um, as a small child in this school and built a relationship with your peers, exactly. I'm guessing. Exactly, and I think that is also what management and let's say people in, in, in positions of power could see, oh, there is no issue here. Yeah. Um, but it took some, some brave people to, to say, okay, let's try. And I know that that was a conversation when I, when I started at the, let's say, the fully ballet yeah. um, route. Yeah, and there, there, there had been some concern. Oh, will he make it? Wah, wah, wah. What is this? This right. is new. Um, but over the years, they realized, oh, yeah, this is. It works. It works. <laughs> no issue. Yeah. No, no issue. And then slowly now, the company is is changing, changing a lot. Yeah. Changing fast. Nice. I'm really, I'm really impressed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really impressed. Nice. Um, but uh, this is also the feeling why we are talking. Uh, all companies are doing yeah. doing good work at this point. We yeah, are really, really trying good. to address it and exactly. sort of make some changes. Exactly. What would you say is um, a role where you really felt like, oh my God, I'm, ha um, I'm sort of breaking the mold or really having the opportunity and not, not necessarily I just actually, yeah, yeah, I mean, with with representation, yeah, yeah, um, and and I would also add, when was the, when was the first time that you sort of that that kind of power or click yeah. happened yeah. that we talked about when you're younger and sort mm. of you're like, no, I, this is my art. Mm. Like, what did you know that? Mm, when, mm, mm. Th yeah, it was good you asked f uh, for a specific role because it's very, it's actually very clear. Mm -hmm. um, so the Royal Danish Ballet. Is um, its whole legacy and, and what is built upon is the Bonneville style, one of the Bonneville ballets that we still do today is La Sulfide, mm -hmm. um, and I want to say in 2014-15 a new version was made, a new production was made, and in that uh, the should we call her the witch character. Mm -hmm who the history of her has been mostly played by women, but also played by men. Okay. Um, and at this point, gone back to being, being played by women. And then this new production said, okay, let's bring the men out again. And so for me, it was good, okay, I, I, can, I can do this part. But it was also a moment of, okay, if I am the Let's say, okay, in, in the story, the witch is the other, the witch is the, right. the, the evil force, but yeah. maybe it comes from rejection from earlier in life, blah, 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 blah. Um, how can I use myself in this? Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the, the big click, like, yeah. okay, let's, uh, let you, let's use it as a, as a power, as a yeah. superpower. Yeah, it was a big <laughs> moment, it was a big moment, and I... I we didn't talk about much about it in the studio, no, so nothing of this, but, but personally it became really a statement of, yeah, I can use this as a superpower. Yes, I'm the other, but I'm also the one with the, who, who can read the fortune teller hand. I'm the one yeah. with the power of making the scarf that will kill her. All of this, it was really, um, yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Really, really interesting. I loved it, I loved it. And in that version also, there was a 
kiss between the witch and and the main character, which was a guy. So there was also a gay side of it. There was yeah. there was a lot of things all at <laughs> once. Um, we don't do that version anymore. But okay. I want to say that was that was nice. that was it. Yeah. 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 And nice. it was not a dancey part, it was a character part. Right, which I might add is actually um, something so beautiful about the kind of artist that you are, is really your, your ability to take on what's given to you and to, to put it on your body. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. because of course you are in a ballet company, there is this level of technique mm -hmm. and, and all of that and refinement. Mm -hmm. But even just to hear you say it was a character role mm -hmm. and I loved that. Most 20 year old ballet dancers, they don't, they will not embrace True. going into that kind of role because, you know, they want to do technical things True. or beautiful things. So yeah. um, for me, that it's really just a kind of a testament to the kind of the artist that you are. <laughs> hey, you're, you're yeah. way too kind, way too kind. And I'm wondering, um, you said that the school is having uh, changes. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, um, yeah, are you seeing diversity mm -hmm. more at the ballet? How and in what ways? Mm -hmm. And and of course, what has it been like for you? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to mentor mm -hmm. um, if you've come into contact with any of that diversity. Mm -hmm. I want to say in the ballet world, the biggest shift that happened that I really saw with them was not only yes the, the group is more diverse but the way they approach ballet steps which usually are so divided male female very binary uh, they were like I want to do a double tour doesn't matter if I'm yeah wow. not supposed to be trained like that and we had we had a big conversation about that and and it was more about what do I want to do on stage and how can I make that happen hmm. that was the big that was where they were at that point and we talk a lot about that now why why is male female ballet technique so divided couldn't we learn something from each other wouldn't it just make more possibilities in general yeah yeah well for representation yes. for what we can view yes. for how we train yes. for the whole yes. thing of it what I is think. possible in the creation what yeah yeah nice that that was the big th big thing i, I saw hmm. that they they really questioned it and said no nah, you know what i'm going to do what i'm going to do yeah i think that's a beautiful part this evolution because i don't know about you i know i'm a few years older but you know i think a lot we came from a culture yeah. that you know, you really didn't spe uh, speak unless you were spoken to. Mm. You didn't answer mm. qu unless you were asked a mm. question by mm. the teacher. Um, and this is something that I see really different mm. um, in the younger generation. Mm. So what was your uh, first introduction like to NDT? So the company came on tour in 2008, seven, eight, something like this. And it was a big, big moment of, oh my God, there is uh, so much that dance can do. It can, it can affect me. Even at that time, I was still in the school. I was 13, 14 years old, something like this, realizing that it can, it can, it can affect you really deeply, yeah. not just by performing, which I knew at that point, but also by watching and, and experiencing um, in so many different ways than what I'd been used to. Mm. And then Paul and Saul came 2015 to set a piece, a okay. uh, short time together, yes. something they had created for Dutch National Ballet. Oh, wow. So we were going to do that in Copenhagen. So this was my first introduction to to working with NDT yeah. spirit. And this was, was the big, big moment of, okay, there can be honesty, there can be real searching, mm -hmm. real investigation, real adaptation mm -hmm. uh, in a process. I think I had been used to uh, a different approach. Right. So it was mind blowing, really mind blowing. Mm -hmm. So 22, NDT1, yeah. <laughs> Royal Danish Valley. Yeah. Wow. Steep learning curve. Yeah. Very steep. It's really sink or swim, jumping in yes. the deep end of a pool. Yes. And uh, yeah, as I can say, not to be over complimentary, but I, I feel like I was here sort of watching you take that dive into the deep end. 
at 22 and um, yeah, it's amazing uh, yeah, how much you just gave yourself to the work. Mm. Was it challenging? It was crazy cha challenging. It was, it was a lot, it was a lot, but it was also what I was seeking. Okay, something new, something different. I know I'm in the deep end, let's just try. Um, but I want to say the NDT spirit of the company is what makes it. There is such an um, engine going all the time. It mm. is fast, it's fast paced, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. And there is no other way than join the, join the, join the, join the ride. Yeah, um, that's feeling, actually quite beautiful. Yeah, feeling this family embrace. I remember first tour, maybe two weeks into the season, knowing nobody, nothing, what is happening? I had no idea. <laughs> and one of the dancers in the airport was like, oh, you have some water, can I have some? And she just drank from my, my bottle. I was like, oh my God, we don't know each other. It's amazing that we, can, <laughs> that we can share something so simple like that. But that just speaks for the whole experience. Yeah. It is family. Yeah. It is welcome, let's go. Pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that wouldn't be a thing today. <laughs> but secret. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was it was amazing. Small things like that where you realize, oh, we're just all going for it. Yeah. So now I know that you are back at Royal Danish Ballet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, yeah, what made you come and go, mm -hmm. which is great actually mm -hmm. um, and what you're up to now mm -hmm. I actually left at the height of the pandemic it was uh, 2020 yeah um, I had already decided okay this is it I'm gonna go go back to Copenhagen my husband is also in Copenhagen it was rock and roll lifestyle for for three years it was amazing it was full full throttle um, but now also time to to regroup uh, and the company was going through a lot of changes. There was a lot of signs. It was like, okay, now, now is the time. Mm. Went back to Copenhagen with a, okay, let's see what comes, what, what is in the backpack. What right. kind of tools do I have? What tools do I not have? If I start reaching out to the network I have, what is possible? Mm. Uh, in the beginning, I didn't dare to call it freelancing. It was uh, too big and scary of a word. Now I say yeah. to everyone, freelance at some point in yeah. your career, it's, it's where you really can test yourself, L know, yeah. know your limits, but also know or get to push yourself. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was good to see that, ah, okay, I can, I can do this. So I know that you're teaching with us currently, yes, right yes, now, yes. today. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I would like to ask you um, what that what that has been like. So, yeah. um, what are you teaching? Yes. Um, what are your students like? Yes. What are the challenges? Yes. What are the great things? Yes. Tell me. Yes. First of all, this is my first time in the new new Amare building. Okay. So I had this uh, <laughs> me visualizing what would 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 be was in a very different place. Okay. <laughs> um, and and so coming here, I also realized, okay, I have to to strip a little bit of of my what I want to to put put on them, uh, and decided, okay, instead of going about the repertoire, which is Hofesh, uh, Vladimir. Um, Instead of going about it with a workshop uh, approach first, all of this, I thought a lot about that. I, th I thought, okay, let's just dive into the rep and see how they take it. Mm -hmm. So that was the first day. Okay. And they took all of it. Which was about two days ago. Two days ago. Okay. They took all of it, ran with it, <laughs> and it's, it is, I'm the one catching up now. And, um, and just to confirm, so yeah. you're working with the youngest. Yes. Yeah. Which are the, I think it's between the age of like 15 to 18 or yeah. 19. Yeah. Okay. So today they had more creative freedom and it was amazing. They nice. went for it. <laughs> people on the floor, people yelling, people yeah. giving energy to each other. I'm really, I had goosebumps already today. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> so proud of them already. So if I could um, ask another question. 
what is in store for you and what does your future look like? What would you like to explore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's next for Sebastian? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. <laughs> in many and ways... you don't have to know. Exactly, exactly. In many no. ways, I, I, I don't know. Um, what I'm so happy is that I, that I have tried different things. I've been really, really lucky and uh, that has given me also uh, a security that, okay, many things are possible, many things can happen and yeah. I will be fine and I will be very happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have to take this one very specific shape and form. Yeah. Um, I'm in a place now where my body can still go for it, so I'm yeah. going for it. And one day it will be different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful that you say that too, <laughs> you know, and that you know that. Exactly. Actually, to know that so early on. When, when you're a student, you, you put in all the work to, let's say, the career as a garden, you, you take out the weeds, you put in the manure, you yeah. cut the trees, all of this. At some point, you also have to to take the fruit, enjoy it, smell the flowers. Mm. Um, mm. It, uh, it goes hand in hand. So now, now, now I'm enjoying, enjoying a lot. Beautifully yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> and come back to us to teach. Yes. Because it's amazing what you're giving the young students. I am enjoying a lot. Thank you. Thank you for thank this. You. Thank you for, for everything you do. It's very, very important work. Very, very important.